Today's talk is on faith. Faith. Having faith. We all have faith in something, don't we? Yeah. Yep. You had faith that you'd wake up this morning, didn't you? You had faith that when you put the toast in the toast, the toaster would deliver you some toast, right? We all have faith in something. What I love about the spiritual faculties of unity is that when we talk about them, we're not talking about, well, some people have faith and some don't. I believe and you don't believe. Well, what everybody believes in something. Everybody has faith in something. And when you have faith in something, it becomes the perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape and mold God's substance. That's from Charles Fillmore. It's not that you don't have faith. You have faith. Everyone does. What do you have faith in? That's the most important thing. Because whatever you believe yourself to be, you will become. Because the God that we have is the God of yes. God says yes. And you always get the results of the kind of God you believe in. I'm going to put my crutches down on the right spot where I'm supposed to before I drop this particular piece of prop. <laughs> I'm listening to my wife. I have faith in my wife. Whatever she tells me to do, I'm smart enough to do it. Faith. Faith. We've been going to, to, to the beach and really enjoying time at the beach. But I didn't initially because I thought the beach for me this year would just be a pretty much a wash, not being able to do very much. But we found a spot where we can go to the beach where we can get right to the edge of the water and, and I can get real close to it, a spot where I can park the car and then just go right to the edge of the beach and, and sit down with my umbrella and, and just be in the presence of being at the beach. Not the way I used to be at the beach, but the way I get to be at the beach now, life is a beach, and you just enjoy everything the way you can do it, the way you can do it. That's what you end up doing. So we're at the beach, and I'm saying to Maureen, it's real important to me that when we do things that you're able to physically do, that you do it, that you don't stop yourself from doing it because I'm not able to do it. I want you to go into the water. It's very important. Sympathetic joy, they call it in Buddhist terminology. You almost enjoy something somebody else is doing as much as you enjoy it yourself. So we, we go to the beach, and we've been there probably three or four different times over the last, what, maybe a couple of months, which has been great. And we're there, and so Maureen, we go to the beach, and I take my little seat, and I sit down with my, my umbrella, and I'm going to practice the faith faculty. If you look at um, what the word faith means, when you actually look the word up in the Buddhist terminology, it says the word is sada. Sada. Say that with me. Sada. In Buddhism, faith literally means to place your heart upon something. Where your heart is, your treasure will lie. And when you place your heart on your spiritual practice, well then you get more of that faith moving through you. So it's not just an intellectual exercise of the pineal gland, the third eye, if the eye be single. It's the heart and the mind doing what? working together in conjunction with each other. When you place your heart on your practice, the teachings are no longer just a kind of intellectual exercise. They become a direct experience that you have of the presence of God within you, and that you have that birthright to become enlightened. If you're wondering what's different about what we do here and what people do in other places, we believe that you are destined for greatness. We believe that you are a child of God. We believe that everything that Siddhartha did to become and awaken to the Buddha nature, you can do. We believe that everything that Jesus did, you can do. Have we manifested that perfectly in manifestation? Heavens no. But we're leaning in its direction. So I'm sitting there leaning in its direction. And I said, Maureen, get in the water. So I'm doing my version of that. And I take my seat. Well, probably not unlike the Buddha. And I do my, my sit. It's so important to sit every day and have a meditational practice. And a lot of times in our work, we put that aside, but it should really be something you don't skip. And so I'm sitting and I'm doing my practice. And my practice sometimes goes like, well, I am existence, consciousness, and bliss. I have a body, but I'm more than just my body. I am that I am. I am existence, consciousness, and bliss. I have a body, but I'm more than just my body. I am that I am. And then the third eye, begins to tingle when I do that. At least that's where I feel it. And my heart begins to open. And in that moment, after 15 or 20 minutes, my consciousness begins to shift. 
I'm no longer looking at everybody else who can do things that I can't do. I'm beginning to feel what I can do and what I can be present for. And focusing in on that rather than what I can't do. And I'm sitting and I'm 20 minutes, 30 minutes goes by, 40 minutes, and then all of a sudden, um, Maureen comes up out of the water. And she's in existence, consciousness, and bliss. She's just gotten out of the water, she's dripping wet. And she says to me, you know, I want, I want to do something. I, I want to take you into the water with me. Now, I, you know I've been in the water. I told you I had my, my feet in about three weeks ago. And she goes, let's do something more. Let's go a little bit further with this. So she says, get your crutches. Pick up your crutches and come into the waters of truth with me. Because we want to not just leave it on the shoreline, right? We want to get in the water. So she walks me into the water. Wade in the water, children. I'm, I'm getting in the water. And so I'm walking into the water. And as I'm walking into the water, something happens. We always say we should be pulled by our vision, not pushed by God. Sometimes we need to be pushed by God. Because what happens is, Here's, here's the picture coming up right now. I ended up being pushed by God. I, I got pushed by a wave. It knocked me right on my butt. I needed to get pushed in the water, children. And there I am, I'm, I'm in the water, I fell. And it didn't hurt at all, in fact, it felt terrific. It took me to my next level of what was the next thing for me to be doing. Get in the water. Don't just watch the water. Don't just wait for a time when the water will be more perfect. As you can see, there were no waves, and I'm in the water. And I, I look like about an eight, nine-year-old in the water, because <laughs> I can't do much, you know? But I'm hanging out in the water. I've learned to do less, but enjoy it more. Hello? And that's what I'm doing now. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the water, and, and, and God pushed me. Sometimes God needs to push you into the next step that you need to take. And so I'm in the water, and I'm really enjoying myself having a great time. I think I was in that water for 45 minutes. A sun went on my back from it. That's how long I was in that water. So I had my version of what I could enjoy. I was, I was sitting on, on, on the wellspring of love and not just watching the, the life of someone else happen, but enjoying and engaging my life in the way that I can. That's what you do. You enjoy and you engage your life in the way that you can. In Buddhism, they say there's three kinds of faith. There's bright faith. There's... Um, a mature faith, and there is a verifiable faith. Now, bright faith is, is someone else doing something that you haven't done. So we're sitting on the shoreline of, of this water that's flowing by us, and there's a holy man who's watching other people, afraid to get to the other side. Maybe it's a Jesus, or a Yogananda, or a kind of Buddha figure, and he's watching people who need to get to the other side. Now, this side is where you mostly stay. You stay on the safe side of things. If you want to make a leap into the next phase, you need to do that. And so this bright being does a leap of faith, runs back and then jumps and makes the leap across, like Jesus. And our early understanding of what faith means, our early understanding of the faith fact, that Jesus makes that leap and leaps across to the other side. And many people just leave Jesus there. Jesus did that, took that leap of faith, I can't do that, but I'm certainly glad that I was in his presence when he could. Well then, that's the first level. That's the first level. It's, it's, it's a kind of a, a beginning faith. The second level of faith is more mature. The second level of faith is where you try to make that leap of faith and get yourself in the water. And maybe while you do that, you stumble and fall and get knocked down, but you're not afraid of that because that's the next level of faith. And then the next level of faith is verifiable faith where it's something you can count on, and it's become your direct experience. And that's the most important thing we teach here, that these teachings become your direct experience, not somebody else's. It doesn't matter if somebody else could do something. You need to be able to work with it in whatever way you can, in whatever age you're at. Don't be afraid to work with the principle and put it forth into action. That's what we're doing here. And so we move into the deeper waters of our own practice. And so we, we feel perfectly fine doing what the amazing Buddha did, which was decide to wake up. He took his seat and, and sat down. And what happens when you take your seat and you sit down in your practice and you begin to open up your third eye? Well, the truth is, or your heart, or whatever other spiritual practice you focus on. Well, you find that things begin unlike it to show up. Have you noticed that? You get challenged. 
And in the Bible, the great challenger is called, in the Bible, our tradition, it's called Satan. Satan means the adversary, which means the one who works with God. Hello. The one who works with the presence to help you go deeper and give you the experiences that you need to take yourself to the next level, to not just have it be bright faith, mature faith, but verifiable faith. And so everything unlike the Buddha, nature in us comes up, and it will. It's supposed to. I'd really like to be able to go in the water and go deeper, but I really can't, so I'm just kind of stuck here, and now I'm just kind of over here by myself, and then that uh, poor me, Kenny party, who cares, makes God want to throw up. <laughs> but what happens to us is we keep leaving it to somebody else. This, this truth is not for somebody else. This is for us. So we take our seat, and things come up. Things come up. They're supposed to come up. And when they do come up, what we do is we deal with them. We, we watch them like waves. It's so ocean, bliss, God, consciousness, no, no limits to how deep you can go. No limits to how deep you can get in the water. And then there's your, your life and the waves of resistance, consciousness, and, and trouble come up. You watch them because they're not permanent. They're only part of a little tiny blip of something that happens on the screen of your mind. If you stay long enough, you go deeper into the well of your own being. And so Buddha sits there and just says, I am making a vow. I'm not getting up off my seat until I experience the deeper level of my being. And nothing will move me. I will not be moved. Shh. <laughs> Princess Bride, you know my <laughs> I will not be moved. I'm staying right here. I'm not going to move. And then he does something really, really powerful that we must do in our practice as well. He doesn't leave it just to spirit. He grounds it, he grinds, he, he, he brings it from the earth. And it says, in the moment of his awakening, he bent down and he put his hand into the earth. Or I'm saying now with the beach into the sand. He puts his hand down into the sand and he feels the earth. He rubs it all over. I'm making this up. But we do that a lot. We, we add ourselves to it. And he makes the truth his own truth. And then when he stands back up, he's no longer just a Siddhartha, the man. He is now the awakened one called the Buddha. When Jesus forgave 70 times 70, he was no longer just Jesus, the man. He became Christ in consciousness. He took the teachings and he brought it into the deepest cellular place of his being. And you and I are meant to do the same thing as well. We're meant to take our teaching and bring it into the wellspring of who it is and what it is that we truly are. That's what we're here for. We're here to develop that faith faculty in us. And when we do, when it begins to open up, we begin to literally create new corpus callosum in the brain so we can begin to experience our oneness, not just a oneness for Buddha, not just a oneness for Jesus, but a oneness that we experience as well too. And that's what each one of us is here to do. And, and every, every day we practice. We come back and we practice as best as we can. We don't beat ourselves up when we can't do as well as we would like to do. We do as well as we can do. And, and that's what we do. That's what you do every day. You make the best of your practice in whatever way you can possibly do it. And that, that's really what our work is about. And we don't spend a whole lot of time beating ourselves up when we don't feel like it. So we're back for um, another swim. Now because you've already had a swim, and, and the deeper oceans of existence, consciousness, and bliss. You've had a state of what faith faculty opened up can mean for you. You know you can do something you haven't done before. It doesn't mean next time you'll choose to do it. I was having a kind of low energy day and, and not feeling like I really wanted to get back in the water. In fact, I was kind of having a whining day about my existence, consciousness, and bliss, and I was just not having one of those days. But it was even a better day to get in the water. And this time, Karen is with us, and, and they're in the water, and they're swimming. But I'm holding myself apart. You know how you do that sometimes? You hold yourself apart from your own good and your own goodness. You wonder why you're doing it, but you get in the cycle of it. You're not watching really well. You're not practicing a deeper faith. You just sort of there and dull and don't want to do it. That's when you need another push. That's when you need someone to get behind you, that presence to push you, because you don't want to just leave it for someone else's practice. So I'm watching it, and the day the sun is setting, and another opportunity to experience something really magnificent is going by. You don't want to do that, do you? 
Do you want to waste one more day not doing what is yours to do? And so I get very clearly, enough with this whining and complaint. And now they're in the water now, and they're pretty far out there, having a really great time. They're really enjoying themselves. They're playing, they're splashing. And so part of me goes, you know what? I've already done this. I can get in the water myself. I'm ready to wade in that water. So I grab my crutches, pick up my crutches, and get in that water. And I not only get in the water, I don't have a picture of this, I jump in the water. I dive in the water. And now I'm in the water of existence, consciousness, and bliss. Because I've had the practice, and I'm able to do it, I know I can do it again. And if what you've done one time, you've done one time, well then you can do it again. Right? And then you do it again, and again, and again. And now I'm swimming in the water. And I even got one of those noodles. And I look ridiculous. But you know what, George? I'm getting used to looking ridiculous. I know my face is puffy. It's from some of the medication I'm taking. I have a puffy face. Hello, get over it. Look at my shoe. If you look at the size of this monster buffalo shoe I've got now. It's just sort of keep me balanced. Now, this is a guy, I always like to look my best all the time. And now I'm walking around with his monster shoe on hobbling around. A little boy came up to me and said, oh, mister, that's a really big shoe you got there. <laughs> so I said to him, well, I think I'm, I'm thinking about getting a zipper, hollowing it out, keeping my toys in there. He said, oh, I think that's just wonderful. <laughs> that's what I would do. I, I would keep my toys in that right shoe. I mean, because that's how kids are. If they see you and they don't judge you. They're just curious about everything. So that's, that's what I'm doing now. You do the best you can with what you have. We, 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 we all have something we're laboring with, something that's difficult, something that's hard. Yeah? We do. Everyone's got something. If you don't, you know someone who does. You do the best you can, but that's what you do. And so there I am now. I'm in the water, I'm swimming, and I don't care anymore a whole lot of what people think on a good day. <laughs> on a good day. I don't always feel that way. So here's what we're doing. This, this is what our faith faculty does. We have faith that regardless of what's going on in the world of appearances, there's so much more that we can be about. There's so much more that we can engage. There's so much fear we can let go of. And if you're still here, there's more work to do. We talked about that at the astro, uh, the um, astrological thing. And we all come at different times in our lives for different things and lessons to learn. And now, now at the stage of being, some of us later on in the 60s, we're learning the deeper lessons of how we can go deeper into the well of our own life. How we can not be afraid to let physical limitations stop us from being spiritually unlimited. Yeah? That's what we're all here doing right now. That's what we're practicing right now. And you can practice that at all different levels. You can bring it into not just what's going on in your life today, but you can bring it to what happened in your life in the past, and you can bring it to what might be happening to your life in the future. This is the kind of deeper work that we're doing, that place in your heart. You deserve enlightenment because a part of you already knows you already are enlightened. You are the one we've been waiting for. You are the Buddha. You are among the minister of God. Every single one of you are. And you practice this in the best way you possibly can with whatever thing that you choose and not to choose to do every single day of your life. That's what we're here for, right? And that's what I call a good day. When you really get in, when you go, you know what, I'm not holding back. I'm getting in. I'm not afraid. I've done this before. I'm getting in that water. And I had just the best time at the beach. But I could have chosen not to. Many times I choose to hold it back and say, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be off in my pity party and miss, miss what? Miss another beautiful day just to be awake. Miss another beautiful day to play in the waters of existence, consciousness, and bliss. I wanted to just um, share something with you. Look at that smiling face. What a happy guy. <laughs> Hello. I, I, I look at that many different times to remember. So let's go back to the lesson summation. And it says, according to your faith, it is done. done unto you. Now faith is called the gateway to all good things because it opens us up to what is beyond our usual, limited, self-centered concerns. It just does that. Number two, in Buddhism, the word for faith is sadha. The literal meaning of sadha is to place your heart upon something 
when we place our heart upon our practice, our meditation, our prayer, the teachings are no longer just an intellectual exercise, but become a deep inner knowing that we know for ourselves. And point number three, the pineal gland located in the center of the brain, or brain, the brain, <laughs> is the center of faith in the body of man. Concentration of thought on this center opens the mind of man to spiritual faith. If that's part of your practice, then you go ahead and do it. I wanted to share something with you that's very much out of the box right now. Are you okay with it? Oh, yeah. yeah, because I, I shared it at the last service. It comes from Joe Dispenza's book previous to the one he wrote on the placebo effect. My daughter sent it to me, and, and I, did, I didn't know if I really was going to share it. And I did, and I told the group at the end of the service, I'm not sure I'm going to do it at the second service. And no less than 20 people said, you share that with everyone. It doesn't matter whether they get it. They'll get it at some deeper level. Are you ready for it? Pretty good build-up, don't you think? It's like a big <laughs> drum roll, I think, right? I don't want to miss this thing. Ah, change my mind. First, I'll see how big the offering is, and then I'll see if I'll read this very, very, very secret, esoteric teaching to you. Einstein, a Jewish brother, all the best people were Jewish, including Jewish, including Jesus. But by the way, you know that, that Jesus was Jewish, but you also know that Adam and Eve were Jewish, and, and also uh, all of us are actually are Jewish because Adam and Eve were Jewish. So everybody here is, is, is an awakening. You, right? Everybody is. <laughs> we are. We're all Israelites looking for the light. Israel light, making it light, you know? Every one of us comes from that same place. But it has nothing to do with what I'm going to read. <laughs> Einstein, one of my favorite brothers, said, the separation between past, present, and future is only an illusion, although a convincing one. Here we see Einstein speaking like a mystic, and why should that surprise us? I'm reading Joe Dispenza's book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, How to Lose Your Mind and Create a New One. Dispenza takes on a notion of linear time by examining an experiment done in 2000 by an Israeli doctor. I want you to watch for the zinger now, because there's one coming. Leonard, and I can't pronounce his last name, was an MD who conducted a double-blind, randomized trial of 3,393 hospitalized patients all suffering from sepsis infection. Sepsis. sepsis infection. Leonard was interested in whether prayer could affect patient outcome. The patients were divided with half being prayed for and half not being prayed for. Leonard collected data on the length of the fever, the length of stay in the hospital, and death as a result of infection. It turns out the prayed for patients had early reduction in fever and shorter hospital stays. Mm. The death rates for both groups were not statistically different. The results may shock some, but science has been doing prayer studies for quite a while and come up with some amazing, amazing, mind-blowing things. This one is mind-numbing about this study is this. Praying, the praying happened in 2000, the year 2000, praying for patients who were hospitalized in the period from 1990 to 1996. The conclusion drawn here was that patients who were prayed for in 2000 actually got better in the 1990s. So what is going on and how should it change your ideas about time? What if Einstein is right and time is just a persistent illusion, an artifice created by the brain? We're used to thinking that prayer or focused attention may be able to affect the future. But what if we can do something today to affect the past? Can I pray for a better childhood? Yes. Can I heal a fractured relationship from decades ago? Can I send myself strength to get through a rough career change I'm making now? Can you? Will you? Shall you? I don't understand it all, but I know it has nothing to do with time and space. When Jesus came to give his last great teaching on the power of faith, he wanted to sum it all up. And so he gathered his disciples, as you and I have been gathered into one place, and he gave them the final, most powerful teaching. 
about our eternal nature as sons and daughters of God. He said to them, who is it that men say that I am? He was asking them about their understanding of faith, because he'd taken them through bright moments, he matured them, he helped them take leaps into verifiable faith, but he wanted them to really anchor it. And he asked the question, who is it that men say that I am? And only one could answer. His name was Simon Barjona. And he said, why thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, upon that realization, I will build my church. Your name is no longer Simon. Your name is now Peter, which means the rock of faith. And when you have that rock of faith awakened in you, there's nothing you can do. You won't be afraid. You'll awaken to who you are, and you will be able to merge the past with the present right here into this future moment. And you will be the vehicle and the channel and the heart through which heaven is made known on earth. Amen. Now, amen, amen, brother. Amen. Thou art the Christ, the Son, the daughter of the living God. Don't take that lightly. Enjoy. Amen.